This is from the uh, just released 2010 Colorado Forest Report, and I won't dwell on it, but it simply makes the point that the, the, the damage uh, done by beetles is also accompanied by the damage from these other uh, insects. Uh, but I want to go to this uh, uh, image. Uh, this is uh, Colorado from space. Uh, and this is a brand new uh, set of images, and I want to thank uh, Google Earth, and particularly Google Earth Engine, which is a new uh, nonprofit organization at Google. And they teamed up with uh, South Dakota State University, where the best of the remote imaging is uh, processed and has been for years. Uh, I'm going to show you a few images here that represent uh, almost 11,000 Landsat uh, images processed simply over a 10 year period. But th this uh, took these folks uh, an enormous amount of work, and I'm very grateful to them. And John's on the board at Google and helped to make uh, this possible. Uh, this is uh, from 2000 to 2010. You see Aspen there near the center. Now, this is the damage uh, uh, in as seen in 2010. And we'll zoom in here. You'll see Aspen in the lower left of this image. Uh, these pictures were taken with the visible light and also shortwave infrared and near infrared. Uh, and it highlights uh, the, the damaged uh, forest. And I'm going to come back to the pine beetle damage, but I want to pause for a moment on fire damage. The Heyman fire was mentioned earlier. We'll zoom in here on that just to look uh, at the at a, a, a small sample of the damage uh, done. But this fire issue uh, is second in rank, uh, as the scientists have explained it to me. If you look at the damage to the forest in the West today, the beetles are number one, and then forest, and then logging. I'm not going to talk about logging here, and, and it hasn't been discussed, but I want to just make a brief mention of it, because worldwide, uh, the destruct, destruction of forests it is very much connected uh, to logging and forest destruction and land clearing. And the, the Food and Agriculture Organization does five and ten year reports, and North America shows up very quiet on those reports. And the scientists here know far more than, than I do about this, of course. But there are 400 different definitions of the word forest in, used in North America. And there is good reason to believe that the quiet in these reports on logging in North America uh, is misleading. And I think these satellite uh, uh, images over a broader area can help to uh, address that. Uh, fires are getting larger, and I want to uh, show this uh, image from, from uh, Tony Westerling at uh, the University of California, Merced, uh, very well respected, uh, and some here have worked with him. Uh, and you can see the correlation between uh, high temperatures uh, and fires in the West. And when the temperature goes up, uh, for multiple reasons, uh, fires become larger, uh, more destructive, and cover a wider uh, area. In the last three decades, uh, as some of you know, the wildfire season in the West has increased annually by 78 days. Um, in the Americas, uh, this was from the Millennium Ecosystem report uh, the last decade is not represented, but it has continued to grow. This is a global issue, and some of you will recall that in August of this past year, the largest fires in the history of Russia followed the highest temperatures in the history of Russia. Their records go back a thousand years in varying quality, but uh, this was uh, quite uh, an event. Uh, many thousands of uh, people uh, died, uh, and of course their wheat was taken uh, off the market, and food prices because of Russia, uh, Australia, uh, Argentina, and elsewhere 
the report are, are reaching record high levels and may surpass record high levels uh, this month. Uh, President uh, Medvedev uh, changed his tune on global warming in the aftermath of, of these fires, uh, as a number uh, of national leaders uh, have around the world just in the last year. 2010 was quite a year, and I'm going to highlight a few uh, memorable events related to climate in the 12-month period uh, just, just passed. Uh, one year ago this month, uh, the so-called uh, thousand-year uh, fire uh, in Australia uh, took uh, an incredible uh, toll. Uh, I went to uh, an event in, in uh, Melbourne about eight months ago and spoke, and I, I didn't expect it, didn't know it was going to happen, but after I spoke, 25 firefighters in their dress uniforms came up and spoke about their experiences during this fire and said none of them had ever seen or felt anything like it. And their leader said to the crowd there, he said, we're the first responders for fire. We've decided we're going to be the first responders for global warming. And they organized a relay race across most of Australia to call attention uh, to the connection between global warming and fire. You may remember a few years ago, the government of Greece almost fell because of the unprecedented fires there. And there are many other examples that I can show you. But I, I would like to go back uh, to uh, the, the map and focus in on the uh, pine beetle issue for a few minutes. Uh, and uh, this is uh, an area well known to uh, many uh, of you. And you can see uh, uh, the difference of, from 2000 to 2010. Uh, and the center of that area is near uh, Granby, Colorado. And others have uh, pointed out how small these critters are and uh, how they do their damage. Uh, it is also, as others have said, uh, in other states in the West, in Wyoming and uh, in Idaho and uh, New Mexico and uh, elsewhere, uh, British uh, Alaska, uh, British Columbia, this, as was mentioned uh, in the excellent presentation uh, from Canada, uh, the scale of it in British Columbia is way, way beyond what it is in the United States. And the head of uh, their forestry center in Victoria said, uh, look, this is, uh, this is now. This is now. This is not uh, theoretical. Now, the pine beetles um, uh, are affected by global warming in four ways. Uh, the higher, warmer temperatures uh, allow the beetles to survive through the winters that used to uh, be colder and used to uh, kill them. Uh, the longer warm season, uh, that's particularly important because uh, the, the, the late fall and uh, early spring are the times when they are uh, in the stage of their life cycle when they are uh, vulnerable to extreme cold and it just doesn't happen uh, uh, hardly at all uh, anymore and they can get through uh, two life cycles in the same period where they, used to, where they only got through one in the past. Their range expansion, both in altitude and in latitude, uh, increases. And the, extra, the higher temperature causes more drought, and that weakens the trees. And these scientists have uh, tried to explain to me how there's a kind of a chemical warfare going on between the trees and the, and the beetles. And, but even simple things like uh, using the pressure um, of the sap to, to push them out, to keep them from penetrating. The trees don't have the energy in the droughts uh, to, to fight back. So let's look at the temperature part of this matrix, first of all. If you love the forests and you care about what's happening to them, the number one connection to what's happening to them is to warmer temperatures. Uh, and 2010 was the hottest year measured in the recorded record uh, since it's been recorded with instruments uh, for the last 130 some odd years. 2010 was statistically tied with 2005, uh, slightly higher but essentially a, a tie. Ten of the, uh, the nine of the ten hottest years in history have been in the last uh, 12 
years, the 10 hottest in the last 13 years. Um, here, is, uh, here are the four separate independent scientific measurements of temperature uh, since 1880. And as you can see, they correlate uh, precisely. Uh, and uh, it, it really is, to my eyes at least, uh, beyond dispute. Last year, 19 countries set all-time high temperature records, including these shown. Every year, there will be some countries that have all-time high temperature records and some that have all-time low temperature records. That's part of the natural variability. But the scientists predicted long ago that the, the balance would shift uh, toward high temperature records, and indeed it has, dramatically so. Uh, and lots of places set all-time high temperature records, and the hottest temperature ever recorded in a city in Asia was recorded this past year in a city in Pakistan which reached uh, over 128 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, now, there's a lot said about computer models and they are important tools, but here's what they show. Uh, the models uh, that take into account nature alone uh, would uh, produce this result. When you take into account the man-made uh, anthropogenic forces, this is what the models show. And these are the actual uh, observed temperatures, which correlate precisely with uh, what the models have predicted. But importantly, it's far from being just based on models. Uh, there are 12 completely separate, independent lines of scientific evidence that all confirm this. And each one of these 12 lines of evidence is richly illustrated with voluminous studies uh, and, and ocean air temperature, sea ice extent, snow cover, uh, and all of these uh, others, the uh, glaciers uh, melting. And I'm not going to show you glaciers uh, today or, or the uh, North Polar ice cap uh, disappearing or Greenland uh, melting at an accelerated rate or sea level rise or in, any, any of that stuff. But there are 12 separate lines of scientific evidence. The lines of evidence that contradict the consensus simply do not exist. Uh, now, in addition to the scientific evidence, trees are far from the only life form that is also giving us a clear signal. Thousands of species are reacting to this new reality that we have created here on the planet. Uh, and uh, these uh, animals equipped with bird brains know uh, <laughs> what's going on. Now every, let me go back to that one. Uh, I don't think that I showed the, uh, yeah. Some of these uh, birds are traveling a pretty far distance. All right. Every National Academy of Science on this planet from a major country and, and, and from those that have, everyone that has a National Academy of Science agrees with the consensus. None of them disagree. Uh, and they have spoken repeatedly and forcefully about the need for urgent action to address uh, this question. 